Hi, this is Ben Finio, and this video will show you how to retrofit one of these push lights, also called a puck light or a tap light, to make it brighter or to make it multicolored. The motivation for this project started because I had one of these lights in my closet and it really wasn't bright enough, and I thought it might just be because the batteries were dying, but when I replaced the batteries, it didn't get any brighter, so I popped it open to see what was going on inside. To open the light, first I removed the batteries and then took off the four screws on the back cover. Make sure you keep track of tiny parts like screws and springs because you'll need them to put it back together later. Let's look at what we have going on inside. I can see I have the terminals that connect to the battery compartment, a push switch, an LED, and a resistor. Now before we go any further, I should also mention that everything I'm showing you in this video will also work for a light with an incandescent bulb. For example, here I have one that has looks similar from the outside, has a 4 by AA battery pack, but when I open it up on the inside, instead of an LED and a resistor, it has a little incandescent bulb holder. So the only difference here is there is no resistor, it's just directly from the battery to the incandescent bulb, so you will need to add a series resistor if you plan to replace this with an LED. All of the other concepts we'll talk about in terms of adding LEDs and mixing different colors will still apply. I'm actually going to put the batteries back in so I can analyze what's going on in this circuit when it's powered on. Now, with the batteries in, we can see that I can use this button to toggle the LED on and off. Now, let's use a multimeter to analyze the voltages in this circuit. I can see that my battery pack supplies a voltage of just over 6 volts. I have a voltage drop of just over 3 volts over my LED, and a voltage drop of just under 3 volts over the resistor. So notice that almost half of the voltage is being dropped across the resistor. That's power that's just being dissipated and turned into heat instead of turned into light. So there are a couple different ways that I could add more LEDs to make this circuit brighter. If I have enough voltage, I can put a second LED in series with the first one and use a smaller current limiting resistor. That might be pushing it a little bit with the white LED since the voltage drop across a white LED is so high, but it would work with something like a red or green LED that has a smaller forward voltage drop. I could also add more LEDs in parallel to this one. That's going to drain the battery faster, but since I just have this in a closet and I'm not using it that often, I don't really care. I have a separate video that talks about how to correctly calculate the current limiting resistor value for different combinations of LEDs in series and parallel, including different colors. You can find the link to that video in the description of this one. Now, of course, it's always fun to make things a little more colorful, so here I have tested on a breadboard to make sure I get my resistor values right. I have red, green, and blue LEDs with a smaller resistor for the blue LED to compensate for the higher voltage drop. So here I've soldered in the red, green, and blue LEDs, each with their own current limiting resistor. I left the original white LED in there physically, but disconnected it electrically, just in case I ever change my mind and want to go back to white. Now, if you're trying to add multiple color LEDs, you might have to play with how they are angled a bit internally. You can see here I've got a nice diffused effect with the red and the blue, but the green one is kind of just aimed right at the edge, so I'm only getting a tiny little circle for the green. So I'm going to have to go back in there and try and tilt them around so I can get a diffused area for each of the three colors. So again, this shows up a little better in person than it does on the camera, but I've gone in there and adjusted the LEDs, and I now have a more even distribution for the red, green, and blue. So if you've enjoyed this video, hopefully you found it helpful. You can also check out the written instructions for this project on Instructables, and again, if you need help calculating the resistor values for the LEDs, or figuring out how to create a resistor with a different value based on the ones you already have by combining them in series and parallel, check out the other videos linked in the description.